here we are again. I'm having an absolute video fest at the moment. I think it's to do with the fact that uh, lots of ideas are coming together at the moment. Anyway, this video, choice in how I socialise. I've done this one before, but this one, I think I'm getting better at summarising it quicker. So here goes. Choice one is to join groups. You want a typical stylish drawings here again. <laughs> Must go on an art course, I guess. Anyway, the circles here are the groups that I join, and these individuals here are people who are outside of the group. So if I'm going to socialise, I have to find this way, if I choose this way, I need to find ways of joining groups. The drawings here I'm showing sort of different types of groups that I've seen. There's the classic hierarchical one, where there's a big boss who basically defines how people interact and what they do and who comes into the group. You have more of a sort of uh, a relationship, you know, of, of a partner one, husband and wife type scenario, where again the boundaries around the outside is often the dominant person again who defines what the rules are and who has a follower. I've noticed on all these groups there tends to be a leader who defines the norms, who defines the boundary so that it creates the sense of group. So as a leader, so all the time those are the sorts of formats. Okay, and then the outside circles. So I've got to actually, if we're going to socialise this way, I have to find groups that I can fit into and get joining to. So it's very much about me conforming to what the group rules are set by whoever the leader is, or for that matter creating my own group where I'm the boss. And then I define who comes in and who doesn't. But ultimately it's always about conforming. Also what tends to happen if, if I join one of these groups, I realise what I need to do is become average. So average is key, because I need to fit in. I don't want to ruffle it. I have to be average, whatever average is, by the group. Okay. And I've also, if I'm going to socialise this way, joining groups, I have to focus on what other people want. I have to focus on what people in groups want me to be so that I can conform, so that I can become average, so that I can belong to the group. Okay. That's choice one. Okay. Now, how do I socialise? Hopefully I don't fall over when I'm walking. <laughs> now this is my second option. Again, this, again, another wonderful stylish drawing, I feel. Not. <laughs> but this one's the idea of a network where I'm networked with everybody and we all act as individuals. We might form up into little clusters every now and then, we often do form the clusters, but they're all very temporary because we all operate as individuals. So this isn't about joining a group, so this is about functioning as an individual. Now, obviously the functioning as an individual means that I need to know who I am. So I have to define myself by my choices that I make. So I'm very much on my own here in terms of defining who I am, but I was much more diverse in the types of people I meet because there's no conforming norms other than if I'm an individual, I'm not protected by the group. So what I need to do is when I make choices is spread goodwill to my network. Okay, because if I'm in a group over here, I'm protected by the group people in this thing will protect me because I'm part of their group. Over here, although I have lots of friends, lots of networks that, that can help me, fundamentally I'm on my own. So I'm like a butterfly where I butterfly to lots of different people. I might have a very deep relationship with this person, but a very flippant relationship with this person, and then a better relationship with these two. So it's very much like a you know, bump, 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 butterfly effect. So it can be very interesting and loving, but it is very much about being an individual, which means I have to define myself by making choices, and these choices need to spread goodwill through my network. Yeah, because I, I better not pick a fight because I'm on my own. Whereas over here, I'll pick a fight people outside of my group, knowing that my group will protect me. Okay? So if I'm going to define myself by making choices, and I need to spread goodwill, I need to make good choices. 
And then what I found on this option to make this option work is a common theme emerging here in my video. A simplified choice is easier to make. So I focus on simplifying my choices, so I define myself with my choices, and I make sure I spread goodwill. So that's one way I've got of socialising. And then I've got the other one, which is fit into a group, get protection from the group by conforming, becoming average, and doing what the group wants me to do. So that, fundamentally, is the choice I have in how I socialise form, join a group, get protection, be an individual, having a very diverse network, but relies on my ability to make choices that spread goodwill. Okay, um, I personally think that as the world is becoming much more connected, much more individual based, this is the world that we're going to, and the world that we're saying goodbye to is this boundary driven them and us, you're in my group, you're with me or you're against me kind of approach. So I think we're saying goodbye to that and hello to this, simply because of the internet and the connectivity of the world that we live in today. Hopefully that makes sense and I will see you again soon. Bye. Hey, yeah, coming back. Right, I so love this park. You just get chatting to people and then they <laughs> help me to do that. They're just random people that walk past and they really help me. Right. Um, one of the things this passerby has just um, asked me about is on this conforming one, you know, where you fit into a group, where you join a group. Um, he said, what are the major disadvantages of it then? Um, uh, and what we ended up um, discussing was, was that we ended up with, say, if you belong to this group, um, what can happen is you end up becoming very dependent on the group, which means if at any point in time, uh, let's say it's a work one, you get made redundant, or to join the group you've got to have lots of exam passes, you get thrown out of the group, so you're removed from the group, you're left as a freestanding individual, having spent no time working out who you are as an individual, so you've got no way of functioning as an individual, because you're now out of the group. And that can put you in a very vulnerable position because you no longer have the protection of the group and you're an individual and you don't know how to be an individual. So that's a big risk of you're committed to the group, so when you come out of the group, that's a big risk that you carry, or that I might carry if I'm in that group and I come out. Also what can happen, for example, in, a, in this one, or, or any of them for that matter, for this one, let's say the leader puts lots of pressure on the follower to meet standards and the pressure to constantly meet those standards can actually um, do someone's head in because uh, they're under constant pressure to conform, constant pressure to do what they're told to do, uh, to meet the conforming standards, to be average and the pressure to be average can be so great that it can, uh, well, to some extent I know it can cause some people you know, to commit suicide, the pressure to conform, the pressure to fit in is constant, it's unending. And their only way out, because they don't know how to function as an individual, can be, you know, tragically, you know, you know suicide, I guess. Although that's, that's extreme. But I'm just using that as an example of the level of pressure that can be put on someone to perform and to stay in with the group. Because they're, they have no capacity to function as an individual. And it's very scary when you're dependent on a group to be an individual. It's a big scary jump to take. Um, uh, so what often happens is the individuals will go find another group. So if you get thrown out of that group, you can rush over to another group. But you then come back under the pressure again of conforming. And then if you get thrown out, so what you're doing is each time you get, you just jump from group to group to group, praying to God that you can always belong to a group. And if the day comes where you become an individual, you haven't got a clue who you are any in trouble. Okay, um, so that's my sort of, that was my answer to his question anyway. <laughs> um, hopefully that makes sense and I'll go and wait for another passerby just in case I've missed anything else. Okay then, thanks then, bye. And it did happen again, <laughs> thanks to this lovely passerby. Right, on this one, then had carried on our conversation around what's the main risk of 
you know, socialising as an individual in, as an individual in a network. And we came to the uh, conclusion that actually the biggest risk of this one is you're now an individual, and if you don't define who you are, you don't know who you are, making your choices, then we run the risk of um, not knowing who we are, making us vulnerable to um, being uh, isolated or attacked by the people in the groups. So, so what we have to do here is we have to make sure, as an individual, we have to be good at functioning as an individual, at socialising as an individual. That means we have confidence in who we are. Often, by making choices, we learn who we are. And then once, I've, once we're making choices, once I'm making choices in who I am, I need to make sure those choices spread goodwill. So if I become a good individual, I know who I am, and I spread goodwill. If I do those two things, the groups over here don't come and pick on me and leave me alone because I'm spreading goodwill. But if I don't know who I am and I don't make choices that spread goodwill, the chances are eventually I'll annoy people who belong to groups and they will pick on me. Or there might be, or other individuals will normally just walk away from me um, um, and then I'll be on my own. So I'll be more isolated, I'll be disconnected from this network, so I will be on my own with no friends, sort of isolated, connected to nobody. So if I want this one to work for me, I've got to get good at knowing who I am by making choices and spreading goodwill. Otherwise I'm on my own. Yep, and also, reminds me as well, is if I know who I am, I will attract people who like me for who I am. And people who don't like me for who I am won't attack me because I'm spreading goodwill. What they'll do is they'll just meander away and go and find someone else that then they, they like more. So there's very little com there's no little conflict. It's just I attract people who like me for who I am, and the people who don't like me for who I am just leave me alone. But that only happens if I know who I am by making choices and I spread goodwill. Okay. Second, I stop doing those two things. These individ fellow individuals will isolate me and just ignore me, and I might get attacked by the groups. Okay, so both have, uh, as always the case, both have consequences. That one is, that one is a, a fear of exclusion, of being removed from the group, and the pressure to conform to the group can be intense. And then if I leave the group, I'm on my own, and I have no way of functioning on my own. Whereas over here, I run the risk of being isolated and or picked on by people in the groups. Yep, but I counteract those risks by defining myself by choices and spreading goodwill for this one. And for this one, I just need to find a group I can conform to, I guess. Um, the one I'm committed to is not that one. Um, is this one. And my other videos show how actually this type of socialising in all sorts of environments, in, in youth clubs, sports clubs, and work, can actually perform at a very, very high level. Now, I think there's tests being done that this one performs higher than those ones. But still, everyone has choice in how they socialise. That one, or that one. Okay, this makes this quite a long video, but... Uh, Hopefully I've covered everything now. Bye. Sorry, one more point. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not the most logical of thinkers. All right, how you move from here to fitting into groups to being an effective individual, but, yep, is by accepting the fact this choice exists, realising that you can choose to do this one, and you, don't, and you don't want to do it anymore, and you want to move to be an individual. So what you then have to do is accept that's this one, you then move to this one, simply by starting quietly, without anybody knowing, starting making your own choices. Define your own choices, define your own choices, and gradually cut the umbilical cord to the groups that you belong, and gradually become an individual defining yourself by your own choices, spreading goodwill. 
Okay, so the key to move from there to there is to start making choices. And obviously the choices are easier to make if you simplify them. Okay. Hopefully that is the last. <laughs> and I'll see you soon.